here she is then, the upgrade to my favorite camera ever. Box is very familiar, interesting little marks on the back there. Let's see how we get on. This is launch day, the actual launch day. These are retail copies in the UK. Wex delivered them this morning. First of all, we've got a Fujifilm Connect little booklet there. We've got a pack of the usual in here. So let's take a quick sneak peek at that. We've got a worldwide network distributor list there. We've got little Capture One booklet there. That's interesting. Capture One Fujifilm getting a bit of a plug direct there. A caution bits and pieces and what's actually a nice fat chunky and in this case all english manual nice and clear and as i said before although we don't tend to bother much with user guides and manuals i do like my fujifilm ones and i do have them sitting on the shelf ready for a quick flick through a little browse you never know what little gems you find even if you've been working with these cameras for a long time and there might be a couple of things in this new upgrade that i might want to have a little look at in there maybe who knows let's see and we've got another little caution here the battery is not charged cool that's fine specification for the power adapter in there the beauty itself which we shall come back to in just a moment don't worry we should have all the bits and pieces that we need to get powered up and get going so we've got usb cable right there usb c good to go a strap these are nice funky fat straps i don't tend to use them as i like my peak design straps so that'll stay wrapped up we've got the brand new w235 battery now we have ordered spares and the dual charge but it hasn't arrived yet fujifilm wex i should say well both of them we got this out for launch date but we're still awaiting the spare we've got a uk plug there's an eu plug in there as well a audio adapter of course you haven't got a headphone socket but you use a usb port with this little dongle here relatively controversial but it's there and if you get desperate i suppose you'll get a grip literally get a grip and something else that's new the usb charger so in my case i get the uk plug clip it straight in there usb c into there and the other end into my wall socket and i'm good to go i'll use the dual charger when that arrives and of course more importantly the egg carton itself no <laughs> of course i'm kidding we need to look at this oh it already feels a tad chunky let's break the seal This is what happens when you try and do things delicately. There we go. And there it is. Definitely feel that extra bit of chunk. Definitely feel some nice texture all the way around. Rubbery along here and the grip. All the grip is rubbery. Back of the screen, plasticky feel, but everything on the side there plasticky there rubbery there feels good looks nice in the hands across the top pretty familiar situation here i'm going to put that to c because that's where i like to use my exposure compensator and use the front dial to adjust we've got a nice clicky dial there that c mode i don't recognize that from before maybe I'm missing something there. Shutter speed. Business as usual, feels good, locks nicely. Nice bit of grip along the side. Hot shoe adapter there. Shutter feels the same currently. Of course, I've got to get out and play with it a lot to see how we feel about that. Everything feels nice and solid. Let's see how long it takes to lose this port there. 
no big changes there. Of course, there's some minor design changes that you'd have seen online, but all is looking good there. Let's flip to this side. There we go, this port opens up there to reveal the mic port and the remote port. Of course, as we said before, no headphone jack, but I should assume it's in here. USB and HDMI, you can use that adapter that we saw with the USB-C port. Very handy, of course, we're gonna charge up via that for now. And also, I believe we can keep it running with a power bank especially the power delivery banks, of course. I wanna see if a regular power bank will put enough power to that to get keep it going while I'm shooting. I'm not sure if they implemented that yet. If not, power delivery bank is the way forward. So nice and simple there. They close decent, very flush. Flip over to this side. Dual card slots seems to be nice and flush, nice and tight. Your connector port there. Big fat battery goes in here, so where are you? Locks in, not coming out anytime soon, as you would expect. And of course, you've got the little door there if you're gonna connect a DC cable in there. I think I'd go with the power delivery bank route if I needed to do something long, like a long video shoot or time lapse. As you can see, we've got this dial there. It's quite a stiff dial, but that's fine. I don't need to race through it. As you'll notice, there's no movie mode there because on this side, still and movie, slightly controversial for some people, but then isn't everything controversial these days on the internet? That's fine for me. These buttons have had a little redesign. The AF button's a bit more proud. Lever seems to feel the same. The little push in there, D-pad feels the same. And the display, the grip, again, is pretty nice. Although I said it felt a bit chunkier, it isn't that much bigger than the T3, but you know, if you've had your hands on it for a long time, you'll probably notice the difference, but it feels fine. In fact, if you've got bigger hands, might not even be a big issue. So there we go, that's it, that's everything. I suppose there's one more thing. This interesting little piece. Now, it does fit nice and flush, which I noticed with the X100V was really well implemented on there. On this camera, we've got a nice little indent there. And yeah, that's good. That's very nice. And it flicks all the way around. Now, a lot of people complain that they only shoot stills and they don't need this. And for some people it gets in the way somehow. Anyway, although it is quite handy to have a screen you can quickly flick up, and a little bit down and also pop out to the side. This one, I think you'll get used to, and it does offer more angles, even for a still shooter, than the previous screen did. But of course, if you don't like the screen at all, that's fine. The T3 is still readily available and still a solid buy. Even for many, the T2, as we said, T1, cracking cameras, especially for stills. Well, the T2 is real nice for video too. But to all intents and purposes, of course, I like it. EVF unit feels solid, feels pretty much business as usual. Everything is, well, that phrase, so far so good, business as usual, and whatever other catchphrase I can think of. But frankly, we just need to charge this thing up and get out and take a good little look. So I'm going to be throwing up my tests at random, and then at some point in the future, we'll have a bit more of a review of this beautiful X-T4 camera. This one's fresh out of the box. It'd be a shame to <laughs> ruin that, but first impressions, physically, feels great. I'm happy with how it is in the hand. Happy so far with how the screen is implemented. Being able to put it away and protect it is actually very, very handy. We didn't have that before, and people tend to ignore that. Now you've got a weather sealed body that you can protect your relatively prone to damage screen, and you're good to go. Everything locks in nicely, and there's no getting out of that. And the rest of it is basically as you would expect. This could well be 
the best all-round camera on the market. We're going to take a look at a few little bits and pieces first of all, such as how the focusing goes with the original trio of lenses, 18mm, 35mm, 1.4 and a 6mm, just as we did with the T2, so might be of interest for some. I'm expecting a, well from the T2 I'm expecting a noticeable difference, but from the T3 a little bit of a difference. That's what we're supposed to get out of this anyway, so I think it's worth trying. I want to try out the low light IBIS, the continuous 15 frame per second mechanical, and of course what we didn't see, what we've got inside here, in there somewhere, the beautiful, I hope, IBIS system, which is really probably the biggest selling point for this camera. We want to see how that fares, but I want to hear from you. What do we need to test on this T4 really? You know, don't say drop test, because <laughs> that is definitely not happening. Subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'll see you in the comments below. And yeah, we don't do that many unboxing, but I thought this one deserved a little pre-look, first look, unbox and all that nonsense. And also, I just wanted to use that massive knife. <laughs>